Hello my beautiful cherubs. Today I am here to let you know that I absolutely think you are all superheroes. And just to follow on from last week where I keep being asked lots of things about how can I get my kids engaged in yoga, you know, what about yoga games, yoga stories. So I thought I'm going to blitz you today with a few ideas and get your kids and you really feeling like you are superstars. So I'm going to begin with a yoga story and, and I sort of made this up myself. So bear with me. Here I go. Right, so, ready, ready? It's so exciting. I am brave. I am strong. I am peaceful. And if you do one side, you have to do the other side. Balance the brain, get the diaphragm open, get those happy hormones rising up from the gut. I am kind. I am a superhero. Look at that. Simple as that. So, what other things can we do? Well, with my Rainbow Kids, we've had all sorts of fun with yoga. We've made a, a, like a fidget wheel, like a spinning wheel from a, literally a paper plate, coloured in the sections and put different poses. So it's like spin the pose and we take turns to spin the dial and then we all do the pose together. Some really, 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 you could get amazing things freely printable off the internet in terms of poses. You could just laminate them, print them off, laminate them, all free, no extra expense. But when I first began my Rainbow Kids, I loved these cards, Yoga for Kids. They were about 5 99 from Amazon, that was all. So we'd use those. I'd put them into treasure hunts. I'd put them into lucky dips, all sorts of things. And you can make your own stories from them as well. Um, and the other ones, which I really love for younger kids, are Enchanted Wonders A to Z cards. And if you click onto Anna Kennedy online later on today, I'll, I'll write an article about this and all these activities. And I'll also put in a couple of photographs of those cards just to give you ideas. But honestly, you don't need any outlay. Um, the other thing which I absolutely love to do, and it does sound a bit nuts, I was going to throw out a headbands game once. I did actually play this in a previous video, I'm afraid to say. I don't think I was very well behaved. <laughs> And all the kids literally choose from different poses and we each take a turn and the person who who's, has to guess which yoga pose they are then closes their eyes and the yoga pose is put in the headband and all the rest wait for them to guess. So they do the pose and the person wearing the headband has to guess and then you all do it together. So everything is like a team effort. So for instance, I don't know, say I had butterfly and they'd all made me have butterfly. I'd go in the back room or outside in the garden. I'd come back in, they'd pop this into my headband or do the butterfly and I'd have to guess. So you can start with literally five or six cards if your kids and yourselves are new to yoga. So it gets you, it gets you familiar with them bit by bit, you know? You could do memory games. I've still got the headband on. God, how embarrassing. Sorry, I'm so used to being about three. Um, yes, you could do memory games where you lay several cards out and then you, you each take it in turns to take one away. And all the others have to guess which one has been taken away. And then guess what? You all do the yoga pose and you're allowed to give clues because that's only fair, depending on age related and all that. The other thing you can do, this is really exciting. I've got to just get something a minute. Oh, I didn't get it ready in advance. You can use an instrument such as a rain stick. And mine is a beautiful rain stick. I saved up for this because it's all done. So when I go and work with blind children, they can actually touch it and feel it. That was really important to me that it was very sensory. So you literally do the rain stick, preferably the right way up so it makes a noise, and all the kids are sitting in a circle. And then when the noise stops, they, we all agree the position first. It's usually the banana one or the side reclining twist, if you want to give it its proper name, but proper names make it a bit boring, unless you're an adult. Uh, well, yeah, 
or, or a kind of large child. Um, so you just go into that the minute it stops and everybody does it. So it's, it's really, really engaging the kids, particularly if you have kids with autism or ADHD, where they might really struggle with concentrating and engaging or doing things not on a one-to-one -one basis, but as a team. It encourages that teamwork, that interaction. But listening, and it could be any sound, it could be an ocean drum, it could be a singing bowl, it could be Tibetan bells, it could be, it could even, if you don't have any of those, it could just be music that you're playing off of a speaker. You know, it's as, it's as simple as you want, really. I mean, obviously I'm geared up because I'm a therapist, but you know, you don't have to go around spending hundreds of pounds on loads of stuff. You, you just don't need to do that. So it's, and when the music stops, you have to all quickly get into that. The other way you could do it, and this is really exciting, and I'm, gonna, I'm buying hoops, I'm buying hoops from Amazon because there's a new game. There's a new game, which I'm gonna try with my rainbow kids, hopefully outside. And it's where you get different colored hoops, and then you put a different posture, different yoga pose into each hoop. And it's a bit like musical chairs. I'm probably showing my age a little bit, but when I was little and we went to children's parties, we played musical chairs. And when the music stopped, there was this mad rugby scrum. Well, at least when I was there, to, to furiously get to a chair and not be left out. I, I was a bit savage, actually, looking back. I hope they're all right. Anyway, so when, when, when um, you say run or stop, or you have a key word, a special word, um, or hoops, Everybody runs to a hoop and they, they get in that hoop and they do the pose. So it's really outrageous fun. And I just can't wait. I've ordered some hoops and they're coming tomorrow and some are glittery just to make it even more fun. Another way you could do it is get the kids to sit in a circle around you and you can have an umbrella. And mine is rainbow colored. I have demonstrated this before, so I won't bore you with it again. But I have got little safety things on the end so no one leaves, you know, like a one-eyed pirate at the end of it. We don't want any accidents, health and safety. So I pour, put some of these cards, whichever ones or ones I've printed. I get the kids to invent their own yoga poses too, by the way, when they get confident. One made one up, which was a little bit like the splits on Friday, and I honestly thought I was going to die. So you could put these cards into the umbrella, and each child takes a turn to pick a pose, and once again, you all do it. So it's encouraging that teamwork. You know, yeah, it's mad, some of the games, and crazy, but, you know, there's no losers, there's no winners. There's enough of that out there. There's enough of that. It's about team building building each other, building up ourselves, you know, apart from all the body awareness and, and all of that. So um, you can also play, um, oh, oh, I'm showing my age again. When I was little, we used to play this game called What's the Time, Mr. Wolf? And I remember on one of my kids' workshops before COVID, I remember we, I was going up the garden and my garden's quite steep actually. It's vertical mowing. I have to do it backwards and have a huge glass of wine when I finished. It takes about six hours. The lawn that is, not the wine. So, and, and what you do is you say, what's the pose, Mr. Wolf? Oh my God, I get so carried away. I just love it. And then you, you say whichever pose it is. So it might be the star pose. I am a superhero. It might be the banana pose. It might be the child's pose where you put your chest on your knees like I showed you last week. So, and each child has a turn to be Mr. Wolf. That's really important. I'm never, ever, ever just the adult, or, or, well, that's an in inverted commas, doing things for the children or organizing it they choose the poses we take turns to be mr wolf you could even i'm bursting with ideas i'm bursting with ideas today and this one just came to me this is not even rehearsed you could play simon says but you could make it yoga says the yogi says and each child takes turn to be the yogi and they can tell you which pose you're all gonna do so there's so many ways. I really, really, really hope this is helping because I've had so many messages from last week's video saying, give us some more of the yoga ideas. If you, I'm gonna finish with this one now. If you've got really tiny little children, I had these little cut out things, they're a little bit screwed up, um, little butterflies. Um, and this was for little toddlers, you know, my little rainbow tots. And I'd give them a meditation where ladybirds landed on them and I'd feather them, put feathers on them and let them feel it and relax. 
and then I'd flutter butterflies over them and they would grab one and at the end we would all do the pose. Anyway, I think I've bombarded you enough. Take care everybody, have a fun and playful week, make, make life worth it and I will see you next Monday. Take care everybody.